Uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome to London Business School the CEO of Microsoft Corporation, Mr. Bill Gates. Well, good morning. It's great to be here. Uh, you didn't all have to get dressed up. <laughs> so. well, the most fun part of uh, my book tour this week uh, is sitting down uh, with people in, in business schools and talking about uh, how they have an, all of you have an incredible opportunity to change the way that business is done. Uh, this is a, a great time to be in the world of business. A simple summary of it is that business will change more in the next 10 years than it has in the last 50. The way that people find match buyers and sellers will be radically different. Uh, that's the, the fundamental mechanism of capitalism, and the internet is bringing a new level of efficiency to it. The way that information flows inside a company will be very different. In the past, employees had to work with very little information. They had a creative idea about how to change the product or price it in a new way. They really didn't have the, the foundation uh, to recommend that things be changed. Well, with the, the digital advances, the cost of doing this the right way and empowering those people has now gotten to be very, very small. In fact, most companies are already investing in the infrastructure that's required. They're buying PCs, they're connecting them in a network, and they, they've got connections out to the internet. And yet you still find in those companies paper forms that people have to fill out with redundant information, things where they have to go visit somebody and stand in line to get something done, uh, cases where the sales data comes out on paper at the end of the month, and so if you get that piece of paper and look at it and say, well, isn't that a little higher than we expected? You know, what's really going on there? You can't dive into it and see it by geography, see it by uh, product type, and really come up with a theory about what that means to the business, and then mail around the view you've created of that data so you can collaborate with other people uh, to provide uh, new approaches. I've had business leaders come to me quite a bit and ask, uh, what should they do to adapt to this new age? In some ways, they, they view it as an opportunity. Uh, they, they know they can improve the decision processes. They know that the way that they've bought things and sold things uh, can, can be uh, far more effective. They're also afraid, though, because they see new companies being started up that just take the Internet as a given, that uh, think of the Internet as the distribution channel. And so many of them won't go and make the huge investment to buy the physical distribution that's characterized uh, business in the past. I was talking to these leaders enough about this that I thought, well, it's really uh, important to give them a metric to say, how far along are they? How much are they achieving here? You know, simple metrics like saying, can an employee sit down at their screen and find any memos that have been written in the past that might relate to their project. And it takes more than 60 seconds to do that, then uh, people aren't going to take the time. And this incredible asset that you want to have, your corporate memory, really becomes valueless. Uh, simple tests like saying, have you, as a CEO, taken all the paper forms in the company and sort of decreed that they should all go away? Uh, that, that requires leadership from the top. Um, people were kind of stunned when I said that two years ago uh, because they thought, geez, you know, we, we created all these nice forms and uh, uh, you know, that's the way we're used to doing business. But the systems that we've replaced them with are, are a lot better. In fact, they're subject to constant feedback. Every screen we've got, you can send uh, comments and say how it could be uh, better for you or how it needs to adjust to new business conditions. And so there's a lot of velocity here, uh, a need to respond to dynamic markets in a better way, a need to have what I call better business reflexes. But I'm not saying that, that people should make decisions without thinking. And that's why I call it business at the speed of thought, because it's all about empowering people, uh, getting more out of their thinking, uh, and uh, it requires a new approach to do that. 
I created sort of three new terms that show what a milestone this is in, in the, the way that uh, people will behave. For people at home, I talk about the web lifestyle. This is the idea that once you're using the internet, once you're comfortable with it, no matter what application got you involved, whether it was electronic mail or uh, uh, pursuing uh, an interest that you have or uh, buying products, you'd like to be able to use the internet for a broad range of activities. Use it to get the latest news. Uh, use it to organize a trip. Uh, use it to research uh, uh, some medical advance that, that's relevant to you or, or someone that you know. And so people who, who use the internet on a regular basis without thinking that it's something special, that's what I call the web lifestyle. Today, it's a very small part of the population. Uh, even in the United States, where it's most prevalent, it'd be well under 10% of the people really are taking this approach. Uh, tends to be young people coming out of, out of universities, tends to be people who work in technology companies. In fact, one of the, the great advantages uh, that the US has had in terms of using this technology rapidly is that those students are change agents. When they go into their companies, they've been used to signing up for courses electronically and researching things electronically. Uh, and so they, they demand uh, that those things be done inside the businesses. When we talk about this new way of doing work, uh, that's the web work style. That's an employee who really expects everything to be at their fingertips. If they're going to work with a customer, they expect to be able to call up uh, every contact with that customer, not just the billing status or what that customer bought, but any phone call, any meeting, any insight that somebody in the organization has about that customer and how they can work with them in a different way. Part of this is raising the expectations that people have. They've been so used to working in an information poor environment where they don't get to learn about you know, why is the company profitable in this area and not in this other area. Where they go to meetings that aren't really about making a decision. They're sitting and listening uh, to lots of information that gets presented. Uh, those meetings should be less necessary and the meetings that should remain are the ones where you're really brainstorming, really deciding uh, what the, the strategy should be. So overall, for an organization, it requires leadership from the top. Uh, the CEO, even though a typical CEO will have grown up in an age when there weren't personal computers, and it wasn't the CEO who was supposed to learn how to type uh, and sit there in front of the screen, they've got, to, they've got to show that they're willing to dive in in fact, some of the leading companies have said to their executives that, that they are assigned homework of actually going out on the internet, buying some books, uh, seeing what's out there, uh, looking at the competitors' websites, looking at their own websites, and seeing uh, what that looks like. The incredible thing is that some of these businesses are still only thinking about this as the website. Uh, but the irony is, is that if you build up the right information views on the website, they're far superior to the information views that have been available inside the company. So all those front ends, all those old ways of looking at the data should go away, and the internet approach should become the only approach. Uh, when you're looking up a customer internally, you may see a little bit of additional information that the customer themselves uh, doesn't see, but the way you navigate and the idea that all, it all comes together in one place uh, should be absolutely the same. So we're talking about rebuilding companies uh, with this digital nervous system approach. To really believe in this, I think there's some key principles. Uh, you've gotta, you've gotta uh, sign up for the view that the internet changes everything, that companies won't be receiving bills on paper. Just imagine a big company getting their phone bill. You know, there's probably four or five people who look at it, type it in, pass it on to someone else. It's a complete waste. Why isn't that coming in electronically, being assigned to the right cost centers, uh, various thresholds being checked in software that say, hey, is this unusual? Should somebody receive an email to know about this? And otherwise, uh, simply happening without any overhead uh, whatsoever. At the same time that Microsoft got rid of our internal forms, uh, we decided that anybody we did business with 
we'd have to do electronically. Uh, and so if you want to invoice Microsoft, you don't send that, that piece of paper. Uh, if your computer systems haven't changed to be electronic, what you do is you go to our website and call up uh, that uh, electronic invoice form and you take the piece of paper you would have sent us and sit there and type it in. Uh, now, uh, over time, your system should, should do that simply by connecting up through the internet. Part of this vision is about empowerment. Part of it is to say that the jobs that in the past were rote type jobs, where you're taking paper and typing into the computer, or you have a, a customer phone call coming in, and all you're doing is pulling something up on a screen to just simply relay information, those jobs won't be necessary. And so the right thing to do is to convert those workers into people who do more complex things. Give them the right tools so that they can take a complex customer complaint, instead of just writing it down, uh, they can actually handle it and uh, turn that customer into a satisfied customer. Again and again, you're hearing, hearing me say that customers need to be at the center of this. Now that's one of the key assets that, that businesses have. And uh, if, you, if you look at the typical business today and how hard it is to go get the information about customers, you know, a customer for one division, if, you, if you're working with one division, their information system doesn't connect to the other division, uh, and there's no ad hoc recording of, of the things that go on. It really is a, an incredible waste. A final principle that may surprise people is this idea that, that bad news must travel fast. As soon as Microsoft got an electronic mail system, I started getting messages from people saying, this is great, we won the XYZ account. Uh, and of course, you know, they, uh, they get a piece of mail back immediately saying, hey, that's great, good job, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, but I, I did find myself wondering, what about the accounts I didn't get mail on? Does that mean that we lost every single one of them? Uh, and uh, so I, I instituted a rule that said that we need to have a, the right balance of hearing the good news from the market and the bad news, and making sure that everybody's aware as early as possible about trends in the marketplace uh, that might say that we need to change our strategy in some way. After all, good news just confirms what you're doing. Good news says, okay, we've got our priorities right. We just need to, to go full speed ahead with what we're doing. Bad news, particularly from your leading edge customers, uh, may suggest that you, you have to rethink uh, some of the things that you're going about. And if you see it early on, there's an opportunity to convert it into good news. There's an opportunity to make a change before the marketplace shifts in a way that, that's uh, uh, quite negative for the things that you're, you're going about. Well, where are we today? in this process. Um, very, very few companies are uh, doing even the basic things here. Electronic mail is popular and uh, not, you know, maybe 30% of companies. But beyond that, when you look at forms and information access, uh, it's less than 10% of the companies are doing the right thing. Now, I believe that this will change very rapidly, particularly for companies that, that do business with other businesses. Uh, because there's no problem with the, the communications connections. Uh, there's no big expense. Uh, the infrastructure is there. Uh, and efficiency will just demand it. You know, if you're a bank that does cash management for someone, they'll expect to connect up through the Internet. Uh, if you're a bank that does portfolio management, the way you integrate in with their uh, electronic views of the information will be the primary basis on which you're selected. And so... It means that businesses uh, have to step back and think about these processes in a way that they really haven't before. Now, I've, I've said that, that our great hope here is that there's a generation growing up uh, where the computer is second nature, uh, where browsing the internet, using electronic mail, having full visibility through pivot tables in a spreadsheet, it's not some foreign thing. Uh, and uh, they'll be the ones that, uh, that lead the charge here. There are a lot of schools that are, are doing interesting things. Uh, and I'd like to see schools take all the best practices here and put them together, uh, have them all at one place. 
Uh, some schools are taking their applications only online. Uh, lots of schools now, when you want to sign up for courses, it's done purely electronically. Uh, you get your grades that way. You submit your homework that way. Certainly going out to research the new, new developments in the markets, uh, that it's done that way. Now, uh, if you make a comparison, the more radical steps are probably uh, prevalent in schools in the U.S. You know, for example, requiring everybody to have a laptop computer and then designing the curriculum around that completely. Uh, fairly typical at, at some of the, uh, the business schools and something that uh, I think will spread. Uh, you've got people who put their uh, research out on the Internet, let people have access to that. Uh, here at London Business School, there's things like the, uh, the forum that allows people, even alumni, to come in and, and see the ideas that are being uh, developed here and participate even when they're far away. Or things like virtual tours where you can come in and you know, see uh, what the school's like and uh, uh, decide uh, uh, if it's, if it's the, the right place for you. So all these projects have emerged in the last uh, three years or so. For Microsoft, we learned about the internet uh, because of uh, our people going out, out to universities. You know, we, we were working with the phone companies and the cable companies, and they were, you know, they were looking at a different set of protocols. But in fact, they move very slowly, and it surprised a lot of people that the, the lightning bolt, the thing that really drove uh, communications in a digital way uh, to critical mass, were the standards that had been around so, uh, for a long time in the universities. So many elements came together here. Uh, the base of PCs, the optic fiber bringing the cost down, uh, some of the new protocols that were created uh, from the standards committees like HTML. And once you get all those pieces in place, uh, it's a volatile mixture. Uh, and the, the explosion first took, took place on some campuses like Cornell. In fact, it was uh, someone who worked for me, uh, Steve Sanofsky, who came back in 1994 uh, after being at Cornell on a recruiting trip and said, wow, this has really changed. Uh, you know, it is ubiquitous uh, and uh, it's a, a fundamentally different way of, of thinking about uh, information. Well, one of the ways people measure the progress here is they track the amount of commerce that's done electronically. Uh, the numbers are, are really gigantic today because you get businesses like Intel or Microsoft or Cisco uh, who, who say to their distributors, look, let's, let's just go on to the internet. And so overnight, you can have $6 billion of business a year, in our case, shift to be e-commerce type business. Now that number, uh, then you can get these gigantic numbers, but that transformation is not the profound shift. You know, that's a buyer and seller, would have done business anyway, simply using this as a, an efficient means of, of staying in touch. The profound impact is where it's buyers and sellers who couldn't have found each other. Uh, I understand there's a startup that somebody's done uh, uh, from the London Business School that relates to ski chalets and finding people who have those and are interested in those. Well, you can't imagine doing that as efficiently without digital searching techniques. And so that's a market that will be mediated far better uh, because of, of the ultimate marketplace uh, that the internet will provide. Some areas like stock trading, you've got over 30% of stock trading in the United States is now done over the internet. Uh, other categories like book buying that have been very high visibility, it's still only about 4% of the sales are there uh, actually on the internet. So we're still at the beginning of this. And, uh, as I said earlier, the business-to-business -business piece is the part that I think will uh, proceed at the, the fastest pace. One company that, uh, whose sales model uh, made itself unnatural to go out onto the internet is Dell. Uh, because they work directly with customers, this way of staying in touch, doing better customer service, appealed to them. And so we partnered with Dell to actually go out and build their websites. Uh, first in the United States and then uh, taking that around the world. Uh, you can see here the, the home page they have in France and Germany. Well, when we um, turned on their site in France, 
there was a question, how long would it take people uh, to come in and, and use it? You know, they hadn't run a single ad, they hadn't told people it was there, uh, but in fact, within 15 minutes of the site being up, somebody bought a computer. Uh, and you think, well, is that guy waiting there for years? Um, <laughs> typing in that URL, just uh, ready to go? Uh, but it, it wasn't a coincidence, because when we brought the system up in Germany, the same thing happened. 15 minutes later, somebody was buying. And so that's an example of, of the profound consequence. Uh, a piece of business done uh, dramatically differently. You know, that person finding the latest configurations or finding uh, pages that are adapted for their company's needs that uh, even has the approval process built in to that electronic interaction. And so Dell is a, a great example of a pioneer uh, that's, that's using the web in a, a new way. For them, the, the greatest cost saving is actually the customer service part, answering people's questions, keeping them up to date uh, on the products they've got. If we look around the globe, and I think this is particularly relevant uh, for this group here because I've been very impressed with the uh, global diversity that you've got here at the London Business School. Uh, you can see that that uh, there's a lot uh, a lot of uh, penetration that uh, still hasn't developed in the United States. If you take the most generous figure, which is anybody who says that in the last month they did something online, it's 29 percent of the population. I'd say that only about a fifth of those people, though, are really fully involved in the web lifestyle. Uh, but if you go outside the United States, the numbers drop pretty dramatically. Uh, taking Europe as a whole, they drop by about a factor of five, whether you take light on online use or heavy online use. And given that the, the size of the economies and the total number of people is actually greater than the United States, there's a lot of people asking, you know, what elements have led to this and will that gap be closed? Certainly PC sales grew faster in Europe uh, last year than in the United States, and so the gap is shrinking somewhat. But the, the wave of startups and the, the kind of uh, priority this has on the agenda of businesses, I still think the U.S. finds itself uh, with it almost as a mania, kind of a, a gold rush type thing where every CEO now would list it uh, among the top things that they're thinking about and the primary change agent in their business, something that Andy Grove would call a strategic inflection point. A strategic inflection point for banking, for brokerage, for insurance, for retailing. It's hard to think of a business that isn't affected. You know, maybe an oil company, uh, you know, who's great at finding oil. Uh, you know, that the internet doesn't change that as a a fundamental proposition. But all the decision processes they have about that, how it's delivered, optimizing those things, the internet will change how that's done, and therefore the things that differentiates one oil company from another will definitely be information driven. Manufacturers now, you, know, you think, well, it isn't their main job managing their factories. But all of that is really driven by information. What new models should be designed? What things should be produced? Where are the defects coming from? Uh, the, the excellence, even in the, the car world, will come from handling uh, these information tools. So we're seeing, once you get outside the United States and Europe, it's less than 1% of the people are connected up. In fact, because you know, we're using this every day, it's easy for us to forget you know, exactly how the man on the street is thinking about it. And so from time to time, uh, we ask a consultant to go out and just talk to people uh, randomly, you know, ask them what they think about these trends, and get some input. And we made a video of that. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and take a look at it. Born to see for America, we're talking to people about technology and how it will affect their life in the future. Do you use the internet? I actually met my boyfriend on the computer. 
So we still have a long ways to go uh, in terms of getting this web lifestyle out to everyone. I think one of the reasons that people still underestimate uh, how quickly this will come is because they don't 
and have a sense of the how the innovation will change the interface, how to change the devices. There's some upcoming advances here that are, are very, very important to this. Of course, we've got the miracle of the microprocessor. Every two years, it's giving us something twice as fast with no increase in cost. And that's why computing is a million times cheaper today than it was 20 years ago. That's not slowing down. In fact, it's actually getting a bit faster. That's why we'll be able to take PCs and handle not only the things that mainframes would have been used for in the past, but this incredible level of transactions and reliability that these internet sites will require. One key element of the infrastructure will be wireless networks and networks that can deal with audio and video. Uh, today, people are reluctant to put video conferencing and uh, multimedia onto their networks because they're worried that it'll, it'll crowd out the key traffic, the transaction traffic uh, that's higher priority. As we work with companies like Cisco to define ways to manage that traffic and shape it, uh, then those applications will be encouraged in the corporate environment. Uh, likewise, having the wireless approach in your place of business means that your phone won't be wired to your desk. You can take a screen device with you. Uh, you'll have a, a screen device that uh, you just carry around and, and take into meetings. Uh, there's a lot we can do to improve collaboration. The way people find out about new developments, the way they work with each other on those things, the software needs to make it easier to not get overwhelmed by irrelevant things and yet make sure that you're notified of the things that you would care about. Uh, speech recognition will be part of the interface. Uh, that's been a, a tough problem because people are very demanding of high quality. You know, the keyboard isn't that bad. And so even though we're going to have this extra speed, probably four or five years away before that's the typical interface. Even sooner than that, though, we will have handwriting recognition. Uh, we'll have a device that literally is the size of a tablet uh, that has very, very high quality text on it. So even a long document, you wouldn't feel the need to print it out. You'd be able to sit and read it uh, just off of the screen. The, the, the software to make that, the text appear the right way and the fact that you can adjust the viewing length and have it uh, like you would a book is very important here. And so in a meeting like this one, three or four years from now, I think everyone will have a, a tablet PC and be taking uh, notes on it so you don't have a mismatch between what you do on paper and what you do on the computer. Finally, you will have uh, all these different size devices. The PC will probably reserve that term for the full screen device where you create documents and edit documents, whether it's at home or in the workplace. But you'll certainly have a device that has phone-like functionality that is smaller, that fits into the pocket and not only connects up for voice, uh, but also digital wireless. You'll have something in your car that you can just talk to and ask for a radio station or directions to a new location. Uh, it'll be up to date in terms of what the traffic conditions are uh, and fully connected with all your other devices. You won't have to be involved with moving information between them. If you get somebody's phone number and put that on your small device, it'll show up automatically on your PC and your auto PC uh, without uh, any overhead at all. And we'll also have the TV connected up to a high-speed two-way network using the cable or phone infrastructure so that getting email, playing multiplayer games, that'll all be very natural. In fact, if you're watching a sports show, you'll be able to look at your buddy list and see if any of your friends are watching the same thing. If so, you'll be able to open up a, a voice conversation and talk with them simply as you're uh, watching together. And so a, a lot of variety but all connected to the same network, all sharing uh, the same information. So this is a, a pretty exciting time uh, to be uh, in business. You know, the, the, it won't be the, necessarily the leaders of the past or the leaders in the, in the future. The jobs won't be the same that they've been. And there's no doubt in my mind that the successful companies will be the one that really grab these tools. And I think that's an exciting opportunity and, and certainly something I think we'll all, all have fun uh, making a reality. Thank you.